Section 16 of The Schoolmaster and Other Stories by Anton Chekhov. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by William Tomko. The Schoolmaster and Other Stories by Anton Chekhov. Section 16 Joy. It was twelve o'clock at night. Mitya Kuldarov with excited face and ruffled hair, flew into his parents' flat and hurriedly ran through all the rooms. His parents had already gone to bed. His sister was in bed, finishing the last page of a novel. His schoolboy brothers were asleep. "'Where have you come from?' cried his parents in amazement. "'What is the matter with you?' "'Oh, don't ask. I never expected it. No, I never expected it. It's, it's positively incredible.' Mitya laughed and sank into an armchair, so overcome by happiness that he could not stand on his legs. "'It's incredible! You can't imagine! Look!' His sister jumped out of bed and, throwing a quilt round her, went into her brother. The schoolboys woke up. "'What's the matter? You don't look like yourself.' "'It's because I am so delighted, Mama. Do you know, now all Russia knows of me. All Russia!' Till now, only you knew that there was a registration clerk called Dmitri Kularov, and now all Russia knows it. Mama! Oh, Lord! Mitya jumped up, ran up and down all the rooms, and then sat down again. Why, what has happened? Tell us sensibly. You live like wild beasts. You don't read the newspapers and take no notice of what's published. And there's so much that is interesting in the papers. If anything happens, it's all known at once. Nothing is hidden. How happy I am! Oh, Lord, you know, it's only celebrated people whose names are published in the papers, and now they have gone and published mine. What do you mean? Where? The papa turned pale. The mamma glanced at the holy image and crossed herself. The schoolboys jumped out of bed and, just as they were, in short nightshirts, went up to their brother. Yes, my name has been published. Now all Russia knows of me. Keep the paper, Mama, in memory of it. We will read it sometimes. Look. Mitya pulled out of his pocket a copy of the paper, gave it to his father, and pointed with his finger to a passage marked with blue pencil. Read it. The father put on his spectacles. Do read it. The Mama glanced at the holy image and crossed herself. The papa cleared his throat and began to read. At eleven o'clock on the evening of the twenty-ninth of December, a registration clerk of the name of Dmitri Kuldarov, You see? You see? Go on! A registration clerk of the name of Dmitri Kuldarov, coming from the beer shop in Kozihin's buildings in Little Bronaya, in an intoxicated condition, That's me! And Semyon Petrovich! It's all described exactly. Go on. Listen. Intoxicated condition slipped and fell under a horse belonging to a sledge driver, a peasant of the village of Durikino in the Yuchnovsky district, called Ivan Drotov. The frightened horse, stepping over Kuldarov and drawing the sledge over him, together with a Moscow merchant of the second guild, called Stepan Lukov, who was in it, dashed along the street and was caught by some house porters. Kuldarov, at first in an unconscious condition, was taken to the police station and there examined by the doctor. The blow he had received on the back of his head. It was from the shaft, Papa. Go on, read the rest. He had received on the back of his head turned out not to be serious. The incident was duly reported. Medical aid was given to the injured man. They told me to foment the back of my head with cold water. You have read it now? Ah, so you see, now it's all over Russia. Give it here. Mitya seized the paper, folded it up, and put it into his pocket. I'll run round to the Makarovs and show it to them. I must show it to the Ivanitskys, too. Natasya Ivanovna and Anisim Vasilyich. I'll run. Goodbye. Mitya put on his cap with its cockade and, joyful and triumphant, ran into the street. End of section 16. Recording by William Tomko.